Good morning, everybody. It's, um, it's nice to be together once again. Um, so we are we're starting a service um, a bit later than normal. Um, as you, for those who were here last week, the theme of the service for last week was what do we see? What do you see? And today's theme is I see coffee. I see coffee. So that should be interesting to see how we can see coffee. I just want us to be relaxed and to just sort of worship and just flow. And um, I want you to have a mind of expectation because if you have a mind of expectation that Lord speak to me today, use something in this service, not necessarily the message or, or a song or it could be a song or a prayer or communion, use something to speak to me today. If you have that open mind, that receiving mind, then definitely God will not hide from you. But sometimes we can be in a service like this and go through it waiting and thinking, well, I'm not actually be present. Be present here in the moment rather than um, being distracted by all the other things that distract us. Um, so let's just um, open in prayer. Father, we thank you for another time of being together. We thank you for the week that has just gone. We give you all the glory. Open our hearts and our ears to hear what you have for us this morning, Lord. Have your way in this service and take all the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. We'll start our worship, our the first, first worship song, and um, come, let us worship the Lord. Wherever you are, please, I'd like you to stand. We have gathered here for a time of congregational worship, but I'd like to steal a few minutes from this time of congregational worship and let us have personal communion worship so I'd like you to focus I know you have neighbors you have people everywhere but these few minutes just just focus on Jesus and lift your heart and I just want us to have communion with Jesus for yourself tonight. Sing it.
the book of Psalms 135, verses 1 to 6 reads, Hallelujah, praise Yahweh's name. Praise him, you servants of Yahweh. You who stand in Yahweh's house, in the courts of our God's house. Praise Yahweh, for Yahweh is good. Sing praises to his name, for that is pleasant. For Yahweh has chosen Jacob for himself. Israel for his own possession. For I know that Yahweh is great, that our Lord is above all gods. Whatever Yahweh pleased, that he has done in heaven, in earth, in the seas, and in all the depths.
Psalm 100, Psalm 25, verses 1 to 5. Lord, I put my life in your hands. I trust in you, my God, and I will not be disappointed. My enemies will not laugh at me. No one who trusts in you will be disappointed. But disappointment will come to those who try to deceive others. They will get nothing. Lord, help me learn your ways. Show me how you want me to live. Guide me and teach me your truths. You are my God, my Savior. You are the one I have been waiting for. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. And so we come to today's sermon. The title of my message this morning is This Coffee is Good. I'm sure you have seen for those who have not who are not on online to see what was going on throughout the the, the singing and the worship time and every 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 slide that they that has been shown so far this morning has shown different types of coffee cups or mugs. Um, this is the first time in this particular um, um, slide um, of the title. Uh, of, uh, of the sermon that actually shows a cup with something being poured in it, which is coffee, coffee being poured in the mug. Um, this coffee is good. Now there is a general saying which we all know, wake up and smell the coffee. Um, this is usually spoken when we're being challenged, when someone is challenging you. He says, wake up and smell the coffee. But in this challenge, there are some truths in it. Because wake up and smell the coffee actually means to realize the truth about one's situation. Or to be aware of what is really happening. The question that we have to face this morning is that as children of God, as a child of God, do you realize the truth about your situation? And are you aware of what is really happening? I mean, we're living in an age now where there is total confusion. Um, as you know, there have been very many lockdowns and um, and where um, they'll try to open the economy too quickly and people are dying and they are shutting things up and the government actually is really doesn't know what is going on. I was reading sometime this week and I realized that actually in, uh, in the world, United Kingdom, Britain, we are the second highest, had the second highest death per population after Belgium, we were the second. And yet, here we are, most of us, at least who are, who are listening to this um, service and in this service, who are in Britain. Yes, we were in the heart of the highest number of deaths in the world. And somehow, we kept going and believing God and recognizing that we are safe. So this, although this thing, this phrase is used to challenge, there's, there are some truths in it. As, as, as Christians, we need to know the truth of our circumstances, of our situation, and to be aware of what is really happening. I'm sure the government would like to know what is really happening and not what they're guessing is happening. And so this service is about really looking at that and saying what is really happening what is our circumstances what is what is 
what, what are we? And we're going to use this coffee to explain all that uh, this morning. And so, um, you know, there are different types of coffee, and as the as the years have gone, people have uh, come up with all kinds of way of drinking coffee. Currently, on the on the screen here, I have thirty different types of ways in which coffee is drunk, or you can order or buy coffee. That's thirty there, but there are actually over hundred. There are about a hundred. Uh, species of cobby beans. So you can just imagine a hundred species of cobby beans and each of those species, each of those kind of beans can generate at least 30 different ways of drinking it when it becomes coffee. So we have a, we are living in a world of variety. But what happens to the bean to the coffee bean from the beginning to the time when it gets to our table, when we can drink, when we can have a drink of this type, whether we're having it with lemon or we're having whipped cream or we're having it with um, foam or ice or liqueur. What, what happens from the time this bean is, starts from this time to the time we, we get it? And it's just a short example of what I don't want to go through the process, the whole process today, but just a, a short clip, uh, a short example of it is what I have here. So, for those who don't know, um, let's have a bit of um, um, a cultural lesson here. Uh, on my screen, as you can see, the, cof the coffee bean doesn't just start like that. It starts from what is called cherries, which is hand-picked. You can't just, you have to hand pick it. So these cherries, and an example, just for you to get a, an understanding of it, an example, if you take 1,000 grams of cherries, you pick them, you pick it from the, uh, on the harvest, they harvest 1,000 grams of cherries. By the time they are going to soak it in water, you will find that you will have about 500 and 18 grams of wet beans. The beans, the beans come out of the, these cherries, and the remaining 482 grams is just pulp that is waste. And then you have the ones that are, when well, you soak it in water, you also have some, of course, some residues and particles floating. And that accounts for about 58 grams of what is left. Then when they go and dry it, they now find that when you start to dry it, so the next process is to dry it, you now start to find that moisture takes account of 158 grams of it. And the good, the good whole thing that is there is about 460 grams. And then it gets drier, the dry bean, is now goes into what is known as, what, what comes out as green beans. And so they, now breaking the shell of the, of the dry bean, you have this green bean coming out of it, which accounts for only 242 grams. Whilst the shell of the bean accounts for 60 grams, which also goes into waste, which is basically the waste. We don't drink the shell. And by the time it's be roasted and this, the smoke is smoke, takes away about 42 grams of it and you are left with only 200 grams of roasted bean, which is then grounded and that can make about eight cups of 25 grams of coffee each. If you notice, we started with a thousand grams of a product and we're ending with only 200 grams of what we are drinking and you can make eight cups of coffee from that. 
the remaining 800 grams is waste that is being refined and taken away from what we started from. In some way, our lives are like that. When God comes into our life, there is a refining that takes place. There is a refining process that takes place in our lives. And at different stages, different things are removed. And we cannot go on to the next stage until he removes what needs to be removed at the stage that we are in. So we find life like that. We come with so much baggage before to God and as he begins to strip them off, we find that we get lighter and we're not heavily burdened. So it depends on which stage that you are in. We are all at various stages of this process because God is continuing to refine us. And so, and so you, you have that. But if we look at the Bible, particular Bible passage as to exactly what is the end product here? What is the end product for us? The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verses 5 and 6 tries to spell it out for us. Hebrews 13 verses 5 and 6. He says, Don't love money. Be happy with what you have. Because God has said, I will never abandon you or leave you. Verse 6. So when you, when, so we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mortals do to me? This is a very interesting passage. I'll come back to the love of money later on. The don't love money later on. Let's just look at, be happy with what you have. I don't know when last you told yourself to be happy with what you've got. I'm sure for me, I can, I, I can be honest with you and say, well, during this last week, there were times when I was thinking of the things I don't have. The things I would like to have and I don't have. Yeah, there were also times when I had to, when I reflect. It's amazing. Um, during the time of um, quiet time in the morning, uh, is we are reflecting very much more on what we have and how what we have to thank God for. During devotional times in the mornings, or whatever time you're doing it. And as the day goes by, you get the phone calls, the emails, and the faxes, and all that. Or not faxes, texts, and all the other things that we get. And we speak to people. We begin to realize that, oh, there are some things that we want that we don't have. But be happy with what you have. Now, that statement, people get it wrong. Um, people ask, say, oh, so, the person who has cancer, should they be happy with cancer? The person who has no money, should they be happy? The person who is not in a job, should they be happy? Well, you're saying be happy. Somebody who doesn't have a house, how can they be happy? But we are missing the point. The Bible is not saying be happy with cancer, be happy with no job, be happy. That's not what it's saying. The Bible is saying here, yeah, that you should be, urgent. Can, can you pause your mic? I said, is it urgent? Can you hear me? Yeah. The Bible is saying here, the Bible is saying here that we should be happy with what we have. Why? Because God has said he will not leave us or abandon us. So what do you have? What you have is actually God. 
Because, why are you happy? He says, because God has said, the reason why you are happy, there's a reason why we're happy, and the reason why we're happy is because of what a faithful God has said. So what do we have? We have the promises of God. So when he says be happy with what you have, he's not talking about your car, your house, whatever. That's not what he's talking about. What you have that doesn't change, that doesn't move, that doesn't get replaced is God. Because God has said, I will never abandon you or leave you. Well, um, there is uh, 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 a thing here. Whenever the Bible talks about, gives a warning. Going back to the first part of that passage. Don't love money. Whenever you see an instruction like that in the in scriptures, be very clear that it means that it's something that you can fall victim or prey to. When the Bible warns you about something, don't love money, it means that there is every chance that you and I can get into a place where we develop a love for money. And it also means that many have failed have fallen into that trap. So don't, don't just dismiss that passage when you read it. Don't love money and just move on. It's very important. That is a key warning to us that there is the likelihood that we can fail if we do not yield to this warning. So how can we love money? Well, the problem we have is that Money is an enabler. Money is actually an enabler. It allows you to do many things. Money allows you to do many things. Money gives you a sense of security. It gives you a sense of independence. If you want to go, you can go. You can afford it. If you want to buy, you can buy. If you want to do whatever you want to do, you can do it. I mean, if the bank is full of money and even when you spend it, it doesn't make any difference. Money gives you this, this sense of security. He's an enabler. And so there is a danger for us to love what is an enabler. But what money is trying to do is to replace the Holy Spirit in your life. The Holy Spirit is supposed to be your enabler. But money can try to replace it. Money tries to come and trick you and replace that. Like a man said to me, uh, one pastor once said to me many years ago, he said that when you are not a very struggling pastor, and you want to do a program, you want to do an event, and you don't have money, you have to go and pray and ask God and see God's face. Should I print a thousand leaflets? Should I do this? Lord, we need the finances to be able to print this leaflet. We need to do this. And he says that but when you have money, and the idea comes to you to do a program, and you have hundreds of thousands of pounds in the bank, you don't need to go and pray to ask you, like, print this leaflet. You print the leaflet. You, print, you say, well, it must, it's for God anyway. God will be written all over it, so let's just go with it. Because that money enables you to do what you want to do. And that is why it is dangerous. And why that scripture was us, don't fall in love with this enabler. Because it's very flighty. It's here today, it might be gone tomorrow. And it's only when we grasp this, this promise of God that I will never 
abandon you or leave you. You need to grasp it. If you don't grasp that confidence, that, that word of God, if you don't believe it, it's difficult to move forward. It's difficult not to be going up and down. It's difficult to be constant in your faith. You need to grasp that. You need to have, I don't, a lot of people have head knowledge and they can pass an exam with, this, with all these words of God. Yeah, the Bible passages, they can go and get a, they can go and get a degree in theology. But God wants us to have a heart knowledge of his word so that we can be transformed in our lives, not the head knowledge. A lot of us have the head knowledge that God said, I will never abandon you or leave you. But we do not have the heart knowledge of that promise. It is only when we've grasped that that we can now go to verse 6 so we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. The only reason why we are not going to be afraid during this pandemic is because we know that the Lord has said, I will never abandon you or leave you. What can mere mortals what can anything that is going around do to me? Because the Lord is my helper. And I just want to, before I stop there, I want to warn again something. The question, life, life is life. Life is hard. Life is tough. And life is hard. As a Christian, nothing was, there was no promise that life would be very easy. That was never promised you. Whoever led you to Christ and gave you the impression that as soon as you become a Christian, everything will just working out for you has lied to you, has misrepresented the gospel. What the, promise, what the gospel promised, what God promised is that he will never leave, he will never abandon you or leave you. During the good times, he will be there. During the bad times, he will be there. During the struggle times, he will be there. And he will be there. And if you have God as your helper, that is the only time that you have nothing to fear. If you have any other thing, if you have your knowledge, your wisdom, your family, whatever, as your helper, be worried because they will let you down. Not they can, they will let you down. But if you have God as your helper, then you have nothing to be afraid of. This coffee is good. And then if we move on to, I want to end with this story. And this is a story for you. And let's just listen to this story as we end. Hey friends, Melly O'Brien here. You know, stories are powerful teachers. I came across this particular story recently on a day when my head was spinning with problems to solve and things to do. And in five minutes after reading this story, it completely changed my mindset. It left me feeling inspired, clear headed and reconnected with what really matters most, which I can sometimes lose touch with. Its lesson will help you put things in perspective, lift you up and make your load a little bit lighter. So here's the story. A group of alumni who were very successful and well established in their careers decided to get together and go back and visit their old university professor. After they all reunited, the conversation of the alumni soon turned into complaints about their life, about their work, about their relationships and life in general. Offering his guests some coffee, the professor went to the kitchen and returned with a large pot of coffee and an assortment of cups. Porcelain cups, plastic ones, glass, crystal, some were plain looking, some expensive and some truly exquisite. And he told them to just help themselves to the coffee. When all of his old students had a cup of coffee in their hands, 
They all sat down together and the professor said, if you noticed, all the nice looking expensive cups have been taken up, leaving behind the plain, the cheap and the ordinary ones. Now, while it is of course normal for you, you to want the best for yourselves, that can also be the source of so much of your dissatisfaction, your problems and your stresses in life. It's important to know, he said, that the cup itself adds no real quality to the coffee. In most cases, it's just chosen because it's perceived to be more special or expensive. But what all of you really wanted was the experience of coffee, not the cup. But you unconsciously went for the best of the cups. Some of you tried to get the very best cup before anyone else could even get there. Or once you got your cup, you began eyeing each other's cups to see if yours were not, was nice enough. Now consider this, he said, life is a bit like that cup of coffee. The jobs, the money, the possessions and the position in society are the cups. These are just the tools and structures that contain or hold together the current story of your life. And the type of cup we have does not define or change the quality of the life we live. Sometimes by concentrating only on the cup, we fail to enjoy the coffee itself. So here is my advice to you, said the professor. Savor the coffee. Don't get caught up in the cups. What you really want is to be happy. And the happiest people don't have the best of everything. They just make the best of everything. So live simply, love generously, care deeply, speak kindly, and your life will be fully lived. Hey friends. How far has God helped us?
forget how far the Lord has brought us, how far he's taking us. We have come, we have all come a long way from where we started from. Sometimes we feel that we have an entitlement. We have no entitlement. We're here because of his grace, because there are many who are better than us, who are more able than us, that have never and have not managed to achieve or be where we are today. So, as we go into this week and we go into communion now, we should first remember how far the Lord has brought us. How far He's taking us. How far He's been our Emmanuel. The Lord bless us as we meditate on these, His words. Amen. Now we'll have communion. I will pause for a minute, as we usually do, so that we can confess our hope in Christ as we take communion. Thank you, Father, for sending your only begotten Son, the Son whom you love, the treasure of heaven, the bright morning star, the one through whom all things were made the one who sustains all things by the mighty power of his hands, the one who it pleased you to crush and curse grief for our sakes, the one who offered himself as a perfect sacrifice for our sins, knowing what he would go through, our great high priest, our Lord and Savior, 
your only begotten beloved Son, in whom you are well pleased, Jesus Christ. Thank you for sending him to die for us on the cross to reconcile us to you, Lord. Father, we ask that you set apart and make holy our communion elements. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing your body to be broken for us on the cross. As we partake of this bread, we ingest your health into our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for shedding your blood for us on the cross. Through your blood, we have forgiveness of sins. Through your blood, we have the free gift of righteousness. Your blood is the confirmation of the new covenant we have with God the Father. The covenant that tells us that you will be merciful to all of our unrighteousness and our sins and our lawless deeds you remember no more. Thank you for the life in your blood. Thank you for the power of your blood in our lives. We take this communion in remembrance of you and all that you have accomplished for us on the cross. Thank you for making us spiritually complete in you. Thank you for redeeming us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that as you are, so are we in this world. We take this communion to announce your lordship and to announce your death until you come again. In Jesus' name, amen. Now time for prayer. Um, we'll start with Bumi, who will pray first, and then Ayodeji Nekati. So you can unmute your mic, and then when it's your turn to, to pray. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, today we're offering a special prayer of hope and encouragement. In this time of uncertainty and distress, please sustain us all with hope. Support the anxious and fearful. Lift up all those who have been brought low. Be their hope in their anxiety. And where there is pain, build endurance. And for where there is fear, empower with faith. Amen. Teach us not to rely on our own conscious strength, efforts, and intelligence, but to lean towards you, Lord. Let us understand that our very present circumstance is part of your plan and purpose to build our inner character, strength, wisdom, and maturity all of which are qualities that will help us sustain towards your calling upon our lives. 
Father, I ask that you teach everyone that in whatever they are faced with, that you are a very present help in the times of trouble. Mm. For you make all things possible, that is impossible. Your word remains, your word reminds us that throughout the storm, we are not alone, but you are always with us. We may never understand your wisdom as you allow things to happen, but we simply have to trust you. For you will learn breathe life into every aspect of our present and our future. Amidst our challenges, O oh Lord, let us learn to find the blessings and lessons that it contains while we place our hope on you. Okay. As we start the beginning of this new week, Lord, please fill us with hope. Okay. We start by confessing our needs to you, and we ask for strength and clarity of mind to trust in you always and to walk in the path that you have laid out for us. Father, instill in us a new spirit that we are encouraged to persevere. Just as the sun rises each day after the darkness, build our faith, strong to stand up against every adversity with confidence. Empower us with faith to see possibility instead of difficulty. As we invite you into our hearts, give us faith through the power of your Holy Spirit. Transform our hearts, refine our thoughts, our actions and our attitude. Mm. Each and every one of us with complete joy and peace and with the blessing of, of spiritual vision to see the best things to come as we mm. walk with faith every step of the way. As we commit to trusting you with all our heart, help us to be steadfast in prayers and faith. Mm. Teach us not to lean on our own understanding, but instead mm. to draw strength from your precious and promised words. Yes. Bring peace to every confused and troubled mind. Be our harbor of hope, O oh Lord. Yes. In our very dark hours, we ask that you be our lighthouse. Let mm. your pure light shine on every confused and weary path. And to every shut door, I speak that that door be open now and receive treasured miracles. Mm. We receive divine faith and hope to approach all personal challenges and confrontation, particularly with the events around us. We ask you to fill us with your presence of your Holy Spirit. Mm. Bring divine confidence to overcome fear and for us to develop understanding, knowing that you are set in all things according to time. Help us to also be a light of hope in the heart of those that are in need. Father, we declare today a renewed hope in us because we are in, because you are in us mm. and working all things for our good and for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen that prayer very encouraging um but heavenly father lord we come today lord and just give thanks um for many many blessings that we have in our life um though we can always find areas that we feel need to be bettered and improved and we may find our uh, many of the many of our needs which really may even just be our wants but Lord, thank you, Lord, that we can come to you in the throne of grace and be content. Be content because you are you are worthy and deserving of our praise. But uh, you've given us all things that we need to live. Uh, you've given us all things that we need to survive um, and to thrive. Mm. Um, and, and not just in this world, Lord, but in the world to come. Uh, because through Christ we have victory um we have victory we have we have won uh the, the 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 war of life in that sense lord um not because of anything that we've done not because of anything that we can do or will do but but solely because of your your sovereign grace in your your mercy and lord just give us peace therefore uh peace as we navigate life um the toils of life lord can can bring us down uh it can it can bring us to uh, desire many things, many things that we want and, and many things that we need to be more established and be more, uh, whether it's financial, whether it's physical, whatever material, whatever it may be, Lord. Um, but what, what a peril it will be to, to have all the financial wealth and all the physical health, but yet not have you. Um, we, we, would, we would just be like dust blowing in the wind. Um, Lord, but but it is such a great privilege to have you and that you've opened our hearts. So, Lord, teach us and help us to be content, to be at peace, uh, to be at peace with you and peace of your love. And um, let that be our driving force to push forward and to, as my auntie said, you know, encourage one another and to uh, 
uh, strive to be to be to be better, not for our own selfish ambition, Lord, but just to reflect um, that contentment that we have in you and that that peace that we have and we find in the gospel. So, yeah, we pray this prayer today, Lord, of contentment and, and trusting in you, Lord, for the things to come, knowing, Lord, that you see all things, know all things, and you've given us all things that we need. And um, yeah, we just thank you. And we praise your, your holy and mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Kathy. Thank you, Father. We don't thank you enough. If we did, there would be no room for complaining. Yet you are gracious enough to delight yourself in the little we offer you. But today we say from the deepest parts of our hearts, thank you so much. So, so much. That was Yinka's prayer. Thank you, Lord, that it's, that it's true. Thank you that you've given us a gift of thanksgiving. Thank you you've warmed our hearts and given us new hearts, Lord. Mm. Thank you for the life that you've poured out for us, that you've shared with us your own life. Thank you that you've knitted us together in one body. Although we see so many differences, you know who are yours. And there is such a richness and a, and a tapestry in your body, Father. Such a beauty we see. Lord, we thank you for the world around us. We know it's the fallen world and we know that you are coming again and you will redeem, that you will make all things new and yet you show us every day the order that you have made in creation, your sovereignty and your power, that leaves grow, flowers come, fruit comes, the mountains and the sea, all the things that you've made, Lord, the creatures, the living creatures, Myriads of them, Lord, of insects, mammals, everything, the fish in the sea. Lord, we just praise you and thank you. And we thank you for your loving heart to us, that you put us in families. You put us in groups of friends, that you know our every need, Lord. Thank you that you look on us and you remember us every day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your greatness, the bright morning star. Thank you that we will see you face to face yes, Lord. one day. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now for just the church notices. Um, we... Our meeting again on Wednesday at um, the chat room opens at 7.45 for an 8 o'clock start. We are now on session 8, the last of the big story. We finally got there. Uh, it didn't take very long, did it? It just seems very short. Um, so we, we will complete that on um, on Wednesday. I'm looking forward to, to seeing you there. And again, just for those who have not been around, we are... Um, the plan is for us to return back to the church premises on the 6th of September uh, with the Thanksgiving service. So on the 6th of September, we are hoping that we'll be able to return to, to church, uh, to a, to a church building with uh, a Thanksgiving service. Um, just as we are getting near the end of the service, um, living a happy life, um, one of the things that the professor said to the alumni guys who came to went to went to see him that the happiest people don't have the best of everything. They just make the best of everything. And that's the kind of thing we need to go into this week with. And the Bible passage that sort of corresponds with that is that rejoice always. And that's found in the book of First Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 18. Rejoice always. Pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I'm hoping that you're going to have a happy 
a very happy week this week. I'm going to have a wonderful time as we go into the end of this month. And so that leads us to the last song, um, which talks about that. It talks about where we should be, where, where we are, and who God is, and how good he is. Oh God, you're so good. You're so good to us. You're so, so good to us. And as we come, just before we have the um, benediction, I suppose we are, we are at a time where we have to give honor to whom honor is due. And so the next slide really recognizes that as reluctantly as I we want to do it, but what has to be done has to be done. And so I just want to congratulate all the Liverpool fans in the house for being crowned the Premier League champion. Um, you have shown us that consistency has its reward. And if we are consistent in our trust of God, we will have our reward in living a life full of satisfaction and meaning. I'm sure my wife is thinking how I could bring Liverpool's winning into a message, but there we are. So all those who are smiling there, we recognize you today, as today is the end of the season, and we accept, as we've done a few weeks for, for, for a, a past few weeks now, that you are the champions. Enjoy, see you next season. And so let's have our benediction as we go. Um, you can unmute your mics if you if you want. So we can say it together. If you want to unmute you. Let's go. May the grace of our Lord, of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, the love, love, love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all, all the days of our lives. Life. And, and we, we shall, shall dwell in, in the house of the Lord, the Lord forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you and have a wonderful week and see you on Wednesday. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Hello, Bye. guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, Bumi. Bye. Thank you for the prayer. Bye. That, was, that, was very, that was a very wow. lovely Bumi, prayer. Wow, Bumi, we saw you today for the first time. Bye, Bumi. For the first time since lockdown. <laughs> I'm coming free today. <laughs> Hello, Bumi. Hello, Lulu. Oh, yeah. Hi, Tony. Hi, Hi, Tony. <laughs> Hi Pat, bye, bye Pat and Tony, bye everybody. Bye. 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 Have a blessed oh, happy, Sunday. Have a happy Sunday. Happy oh. Sunday. Bye bye. Hello okay. Simone. <laughs> He's hiding her face. <laughs> bye Yani. Bye, bye Nicole and Simone. I'm fine. Have a lovely Hello, and be good. Thank you. Bye, Bye you too, Femi. Bye, Mommy. Hey, Bye, 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 Grandma Bye. Pat. Bye. Hello. Uh, Hi, Femi. Well, hey, David. Have a blessed yes. week. <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. 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 O
Don't be so, don't, don't start feeling so proud. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. We shall see. Okay. Oh, that's no loo there. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> that's like a. That's like. for handling defeat, gracious. Gracious, handling defeat. Well, what can we do? I am David. Bye, dear. Bye. Bye. Bye, Simone. everyone. Bye. Have a blessed week. Come, girl. Simone, I can see you. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Hello. 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 How are you? Bye. Okay then. All right. Oh, look at them. Wow. Ah. It's clear. Huh. That, that's that's like Shay's t shirt. She has one Batman t shirt where he wears everywhere. <laughs> ah. Bye dear. Bye. 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 Yeah. 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 Oh, no. I just oh, so oh, like <laughs> oh, 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 so what? Squiggle the mouse. That square flat bit on the, the front of the laptop. Uh -huh. yeah. Move it around. Move it now around. see the leave button there? No, look up. Look, look up to your right. Screen. Look, look at the leave button. The red button. To your right. No, the hand that you the need to. One. Down <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> at the bottom. Uh -huh. Can you see it? Yeah, uh -huh. click. Press it. Hmm? Press down. Hmm? You're not what? pressing the button. I hear you. What did you say? Uh -huh. What button should she put in the pad? Oh, yeah, she has to press on the other side. She has to press on the other side. Okay, Abigail. Thank you. I know. Abigail, I need to. Bye, Tammy. Hmm.